All right, this is part three, tearing down this engine from a Toyota Sienna with a 3.3 liter engine. Same is Lexus with a 3.0, 3.3 Toyota. They are exactly the same. I'm replacing the pistons, piston rings, oil pump, timing components, head gasket. 10 millimeter bolts here for the water inlet housing. Remove the AC compressor bracket. Remove all the bolts for the water pump. Let's pull out the water pump. This is the timing belt pulley. I'm bolting the oil pump, but this one doesn't come out just like that. I have to open the engine from the bottom to get three more bolts that are inside the engine block. 10 millimeter bolts for the crankshaft position sensor. Most of these bolts are 10 mm bolts for this oil pump, but this one here is 14 and this one here is 12. Let's remove a 14 mm bolt for the flex plate or flywheel. This is the front plate. 10 mm bolts here and two here in the bottom. All right, got this engine on the engine stand. It looks very messy as you can see, but I have to give it a clean up and I still have to pull out the oil pump and I have to replace the pistons as I said it since the beginning. Now the pistons are going to be standard since this engine was running fine with no problem. Now this is not a full engine rebuilding, but just partially rebuilding it, taking advantage that we pulled it out from one Toyota Sienna and going to another Toyota Sienna. All right, 10 millimeter bolts for the oil pan number two. All right, these are the oil three bolts for the oil pump. Once I pull them out, the oil pump should come out easily with no problem. All right, most of these bolts are 12 millimeter bolts for this oil pan number one and three 10 millimeter bolts and not for this oil pickup too. These are the three bolts for the oil pump. Remove the bolt and nut for the oil pickup tool. And I see so much mess inside the screen of this oil pickup tool. But I'm not inspecting anything at this point, but I'm just tearing down this engine now. But I'm gonna start inspecting everything once I start putting everything together. Also, I'll be providing all the manufacturer specifications just in case if some of you guys are rebuilding one of these engines or partially rebuilding it, whatever. This is the oil pan number one. What happens is that it really gets stuck, you trying to pull it out and it really gets stuck, you might think that you still have some bolts left. It gets a lot of pressure between the oil pan and the ceiling and also the engine block. It gets a lot of pressure, it gets a, uh, it gets very stuck, so just pray it out carefully. Alright, connecting rubber bearings, 12mm bolts, 12 points, I'm gonna start pulling them out. I'm only giving this bolt a half turn and then I go to the other one so I can pull them out evenly. So that way I'm not putting all the pressure on one side of the connecting rod bearing. I always take advantage of pulling out all the bolts that are on top and then at a certain point you have to turn the crunch off to access the other bolts. Once I lose the bolts with the ratchet, I go ahead and pull them out by hand. And always be ready to catch the piston at the bottom, sometimes it falls off and sometimes you have to push them in order for them to come out. In this case I have a big flathead screwdriver here from Harborfy Tools. Here is the connecting rod bearing cap and I'm gonna put them in motor so I don't want to mix them. And the bearing is tight inside and that is a sign that it might have some wear already but that is normal. I'm gonna be inspecting all of these components later on. Alright, when you're pushing down the piston with a flathead screwdriver or whatever you're using, just make sure you put the tap of the screwdriver as far as you can from the cylinder wall so you don't scratch it. Because if the cylinder wall is damaged, then the engine might be useless. Got to pull out the first piston here. I'm gonna put them in motor for them to be inspected later on. And the other bearing also stayed inside, so they might have some wear already at this point. So I'm gonna continue pulling out all of the pistons the same way I took out the first one.
another bearing that is staying inside it didn't come out it didn't stick with the connecting rod bearing cap again when pushing down the pistons do this very carefully be careful not to squash the cylinder walls otherwise the engine is gonna be messed up all right another piston here and this came out with the bearing that is very good Alright, done removing all the pistons and finally I'm removing this oil pump. If you're gonna pry out this oil pump to get it out, just make sure you don't damage the surface and the engine block. Here is this oil pump and it seems like it has been here for a very long time. Alright, done removing all of these components from the crankshaft. Not the main bearings, of course, I'm not touching that as I said. But I have found two connecting rod bearings that have some significant wear. I think I should have said maybe some kind of wear. But these two bearings are not extremely worn out. I'm gonna be showing them later on as I do this. But this crankshaft looks very good for me. Only by seeing, of course, I have not measured the diameter or out of round or anything like that. But as I said before, this engine had no noises, knocking or anything like that. It was running fine, so. But remember, the measurements with the right tools are the ones that determine if the crankshaft is good or bad. But only by seeing, it looks very good. And the engine was running fine anyway. Alright, I appreciate you watching this video, thank you so much and stay blessed.